Next up, it's our regular Friday feature movie spotlight, reviewing the latest cinematic releases at the Korean box office and online. And as usual, we welcome our film critics. First, we have Jason Beshevace to my right, as usual. Jason, hello, it's good to see you. Hello, Jenny. And opposite him to my left, we have Darcy Paquette as well. Darcy, hello to you too. It's great to see you. Yeah, great to be here. Okay, so we start with one of the biggest films of the year, of recent years, in fact. It opened in theatres globally this week with director James Cameron revisiting the world of Avatar 13 years after releasing the original film back in 2009. It's called Avatar The Way of Water, or Avatar Muregil in Korean. It reportedly cost more than $350 million to make. Unsurprisingly, it opened at the top of the box office here on Wednesday. So, Jason, can you tell us more? Sure. So, James Cameron, um, he's obviously very well known, has a very uh, impressive resume. He doesn't make films very often, but mm. when he does, he he makes these gargantuan box office hits. Mm. Uh, credits, he, credits include Terminator 1 and, of course, 2, a <laughs> uh, very culturally significant film. Aliens as well, The Abyss, True Lies, you know, remember that film rather problematic film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Titanic, <laughs> um, and uh, of course the original Avatar. Sure. And here we are with the Avatar sequel. And the, the first film generated, well actually it cost $2.9 billion this year because they re-released it. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, it was released at the end of 2009. Right, it grossed $2.9 million. Two point nine billion. billion, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's staggering. You can never underestimate... Uh, James Cameron, you know, t uh, Titanic, there are all these kind of horror stories about, you know, what's he doing in Mexico shooting his movie and it turns out to be then the most successful film and then came back with Avatar. Mm. So yeah, here we are with a sequel. So um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of our listeners will be aware of uh, Pandora, um, this this uh, faraway uh, world. Um, and uh, so Cameron introduced us to you know Pandora in the original film of course um, and uh, you know a group of ex-marines have been sent from Earth to colonize this this world which has these you know very complex and very beautiful ecosystems uh, and so in the original movie ex-marine Jake Sully played by Sam Worthington was kind of placed you know through technology inside the body of one of the Pandora's uh, natives mm. Um, a blue-skinned species called the Navi, and uh, Sully, um, you know, subsequently abandoned the mission and bonded with, with Navi and falling in love, um, and uh, with with this uh, with Neytiri, uh, played by Zoe Saldana. Right. And so here we are with Av Avatar Two. Um, Sully, uh, along with his his other half, now have four children. Uh, one magnificently played by the Signor, uh, Signori, excuse me, uh, Sigourney Weaver. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, she, I mean, she's playing someone that's a lot, lot younger. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're basically forced to flee their mountainous rainforest uh, when a group of Marines come back seeking revenge on Sully. And uh, they take refuge in this underwater world. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's just... I say underwater, but it's kind of, yeah, it's sure. partly underwater. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's magnificent. Yeah, Sigourney Weaver, of course, playing a different character, playing a, a child yeah. in this, uh, the, the child of uh, Sally and Neytiri. So different from the first film, but she's back Sure, so yeah, hence somehow, the, the age you know, difference yes, that I was, sure. that I was So there's to, yeah. uh, quite a lot of story there already, a lot of world building. So Darcy, with that in mind, do you think we need to have seen the original film to follow this new story? I, mean, I don't think so. I... I saw the original film back in 2009, and mm. I, I do remember some things from the film. I mean, mostly the floating pieces of fluff in the air that, in 3D, look, you know, gave it such three-dimensionality. <laughs> but um, I think the story is simple enough that you can just kind of jump in and follow it. And um, you know, what's new? I don't know. I mean, it, it feels different from the original film, and it kind of goes a bit further. I guess the thing to um, yeah, I mean, Sully is now sort of completely Navi. He's kind of, you know, put uh, his human <laughs> body and life behind him. Mm. Uh, and so he's completely integrated. And uh, if you understand that, and basically you can just kind of follow his family as they sure. go. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Cameroon doesn't make these like 
Nolan-esque complex narratives, <laughs> no. right? You know, he is he is very commercial. I mean, just look at, you know, Titanic, um, True Lies, <laughs> Aliens, you know, these films, they have a very simple plot, you know. He, he's not seeking to um, intellectually stimulate his audiences like some other filmmakers do. Sure. And as he's been criticised for it. Mm. Um, but there's a reason why his films perform so well. And that, partly that's because he makes these stories so accessible, but also because he's just, he's just an incredible technician. You know, he... Um, he's very much involved in all areas of the filmmaking. Again, that has made him unpopular. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, he, he's, when it comes to technology, uh, he, he's able to do something consistently that other filmmakers are not able to. So he puts on a spectacle, essentially, sure. uh, with quite a simple story. So we perhaps don't need to know the first one to enjoy the second one. The question is, Jason, did you enjoy it? I did. Um, I actually watched the rewatched the original film this week, um, and uh, I was like, "Yes, this film isn't good." Uh, I remember watching it twice in the cinema. <laughs> Why I saw it twice, I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah, I just I was not overwhelmed by it at all, and a mm. uh, bit of a drag. And, and the visuals on my computer were just, you know, not particularly great. Um, and then so I came. I went in with pretty low expectations, and I was blown away i i generally i think i think this film visually it's just it's truly truly remarkable uh the attention to detail um he's just created this world that is is, is unlike anything i've ever seen before mm. i mean with marvel films you, you kind of get i mean it's a cg cgi avalanche but you kind of get desensitized to it all right mm. but this this is different okay um and the way he's able to get you know these incredible performances out of his cast whilst also you know obviously you in, incorporating a lot of visual effects um but also i think what stood out for me is the the emotional arc of the film so the film oh, okay. and I, that's why i think it will play really well to korean audiences because you know melodrama is so important mm. here and so this film focuses <laughs> on this family and focuses you know on their bonding sure um and it just has a really powerful story at the center of it it's not complicated <laughs> um and but you know i was really as a parent i was really drawn into that and that was something I wasn't expecting. Interesting. So, Darcy, what did you make of it? Did it work for you on that level as well? I, I mean, the critical response has been rather mixed. Some people were blown away like, uh, like Jason was, but uh, others were far more uh, critical of it. What did you make of it? Yeah, I mean, it has been really interesting to see the critical response. And I, I also wasn't expecting to like it. I'm not a huge fan of the original. Uh, and I mean, like a lot of critics, I don't really like James Cameron because he's such an unlikable, arrogant personality that you kind of, you know, as a film critic, you just kind of want to sharpen your knives when he comes out with a new film. Uh, but I have to admit, you know, I sat in front of the film for, for three hours and however many minutes and, uh, it yeah, just long film. really, it really pulled me into it. Um, I think that, you know, James Cameron began his career in production design. And I think that's kind of a really important aspect of his filmmaking. And if you think about kind of blockbuster cinema, it's partly about storytelling, but, um, you know, the films that really feel big and engaging are the ones that create a certain world mm. that pull you in. That, um, yeah, I mean, Jason makes a good point in comparing this to Marvel films, because Marvel films too create their own world, but they don't have the detail or um, the... Yeah, the texture of, of this, and so sure, and it's based on the real world, the Earth, basically. Whereas yeah. here, he's creating a completely new world. Yeah, so you could argue that the film is actually quite political uh, because mm, clearly okay. he has a big um, interest in in the ocean and that that whole ecosystem. Mm. Um, and you know, you watch this film, and, and you you do want to jump in the ocean and protect it. Mm. And so, in that sense, it it is political. Um, and you he, want to he shoot the to, humans, yeah. <laughs> get those humans, yeah, get, get the humans out and protect 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 our protect our precious planet. So sure. um, okay. Um, so so yeah, I, I completely agree with Darcy. Uh, there, there is uh, 
It's a rather anti-human film, but still, <laughs> uh, two thumbs up from both our critics. Sure. Uh, perhaps a surprise, but it does seem to have worked on a critical level, and perhaps we'll see whether it makes a, a box office smash as well. I'm sure it will. Whether oh, it'll be yeah. as big as $2.9 billion, though, uh, is another question. Well, it has to. It has to make money, because it it's so expensive. Money? Apparently, sure. was, it, Cameron was saying it, it has to be like the third and fourth most successful film ever for it to break even. <laughs> sure, and it also, uh, there's Avatar 3, 4, uh, and five, I believe, coming as well in the future. So, yes, uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, wanting to make sure that it's a success. Uh, we have to move on yes. because there is another film that we want to talk about. Uh, <laughs> there are very few other releases uh, this week, given the competition provided by Avatar. Uh, but we do have a notable foreign release from Indonesia, which premiered at the Berlin Film Festival back in February. It's from the up and coming director Camilla Andini. And it's called Before, Now and Then. And the Korean title is simply Nana after the protagonist in the film. Uh, it won a Berlin Award for Best Supporting Performance and also recently carried home the Grand Prize at the Asia Pacific Screen Awards as well. So Darcy, can you briefly set up for us? Yeah, it's set in Indonesia in the 1960s, which were a time when, I mean, the nation was kind of finding itself. You know, it only gained its independence from the Netherlands uh, at the end of the 1940s. Uh, but it was also a time of violent conflict due to these anti-communist purges. And so viewers who have seen Joshua Oppenheimer's really famous 2012 documentary, The Act of Killing, we'll kind of know the backdrop. Uh, you know, but the, the violence is kind of in the background in this film, and it focuses on a, a woman named Nana. Uh, she's married to a wealthy man, a uh, Sundanese man. And we learn in flashbacks that uh, Nana had to flee her home village after hearing that her father and husband were killed. Um, you know, in the present day, she... in some ways leads kind of a luxurious life, but she's not fully accepted in her community. Uh, she discovers that her husband is being unfaithful. Mm. Uh, she's trying to cope with her own feelings of sort of alienation or dissatisfaction. Uh, she gets to know her husband's mistress, and then the two of them unexpectedly become close as well. So Jason, what do you think of the film? I know some critics have compared it to uh, the Hong Kong classic In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai. Yeah, for a few reasons, uh, not least the music, um, composer Ricky Leonardi, uh, who just, I mean, it's just a terrific um, collection of, of, of music. Uh, so all pop songs, strings, native Indonesian uh, music. Uh, and the music is almost throughout the whole narrative, actually. Um, and it just creates this really intriguing move right from the beginning of the film right to the end and it's so beautifully shot yeah. um I, yeah, it's I, really I, nice <laughs> I, I i i was watching it on my computer i was like this is not the best place to watch this movie uh because it's 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 so um it's, it really moved me it's so endearing and you've got these two kind of central female characters and the male characters in the film you they barely get a look in actually which is a really i think one of its key strengths mm. because the patriarchy is 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 clearly there mm. um and and it's just a really interesting approach to just follow it from their perspective and you see these kind of relationships develop you, you see the conflicts develop as well but mm. um it's it's quite it's quite subtle and yet also really really powerful mm. um it's it's a film that will stay with me for a long time and the the acting is terrific and Darcy, what do you think? I really liked it as well. Uh, I mean, I'm really excited about this director's career. Uh, she's actually the daughter of Indonesia's most famous filmmaker, Karin Nagorho. And she's made four feature films to date. Um, each one has been in a different language. I mean, Indonesia has many, many languages. Uh, and uh, she shoots in languages that she doesn't speak. But, I mean, she finds these stories that, you know, they come from history or, you know, she finds these communities that... Uh, you know, people outside don't really know about, and she creates these really engaging stories that are both universal but then really specific in an interesting way. Okay, so that was Before, Now and Then, or Nana, and that is where we're going to have to leave it for today's uh, movie spotlight. Jason, Darcy, thank you as always for your considered thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Yes, take care. Have a great weekend. <laughs>